Um, hi, Katrine. Hi, Indy. How are you doing today? Yeah, good. good. How are you? I'm doing well, trying to stay cool in this heat, you know? <laughs> um, so I am a big industry fan, actually. I was so excited when I got assigned to this junket. Um, I watched last season and I binged as much as I could of this season in preparation. So I'm really excited for you guys to join the show. Um, first, I want to give you guys a chance to tell the viewers a little bit about your characters. Uh, Katrine, would you like to go first? Yeah, sure. So Celeste is uh, working at Pierpoint as a uh, managing director of uh, private wealth management. She's up uh, in the penthouse in a swishy office. And um, she is, um, yes, a very interesting character. There are lots of sides to her. <laughs> Um, very unexpected at times, um, very playful, very dominant, very manipulating, and sort of in a way old world, you know, she's sort of like, she uses what she's got um, to get her way. Um, she's got a very complicated home life, um, which influences her and her job. She doesn't come from being wealthy naturally, so he, she's worked her way up with who she is. And um, yes, yeah, she was fantastic to play. She's got the most insane wardrobe, shoes, and a name I never want to get rid of. Um, yeah, and Venetia is she's a new grad on the foreign exchange desk. So she's kind of where uh, a lot of the characters were in the first series and that she's just kind of come into Pierpoint. Um, she's very eager to, to make her mark and to prove her, her competency. Um, and she's also, she's very assertive. She's very confident and she's not afraid to kind of shake up the more traditional side of the way that um, things go and, and the relationships that people have um, the, and the hierarchies within the office. Um, but she's also kind of very a, a perfectionist. She's someone that could be very anxious if she's not proving herself to be, you know, as good as she knows she is. And like many, I think, young people kind of coming into places that they may not be used to um they have all these fears uh, and they push them down a lot and it can kind of bubble a little bit and you guys both have extremely interesting relationships with Yasmin um can you talk a bit about obviously we're going to try to keep this spoiler free um but can you talk a bit about your dynamics with Yasmin um Indy you can start yeah so as I said, because Venetia is kind of coming in on the FX desk and it's almost exactly like uh, Yasmin's journey into Beer Point, but where Venetia is very confident and won't be told what to do, Yasmin kind of wasn't. So I think there are some aspects of that that, that almost threaten her because she's she's looking back on you know, who she was and she's looking forward on, on who she's trying to be. And, and sometimes she takes that out a little bit on Venetia so it's strange because while Yasmin is a bit mean to her, to be honest, and is not giving her an easy time at all, and is not really filling in the, the mentor role that, that she's been kind of assigned, at the same time, Yasmin's kind of strength that she has and, and the way that she's kind of moving up and taking what she wants is, is something that Venetia also can see as as aspirational, she just doesn't want to get there the same way. Yes, and I, I think, um, I think you know, Celeste, Yasmin, that's a, a very interesting dynamic and it, one kind of doesn't know where it's going to go um, because it's so out there. And I think Celeste is genuinely intrigued by Yasmin. It's not just the obvious cat and mouse, pull you in and push you away game that she's playing with her. I think she's, it's generally somebody who trips Celeste up a bit, even though she's trying not to let that on. And, and I think she didn't want it to go wherever it is going without any spoiler. 
in the end, uh, I think she was hoping for a, a different ending. And I mean, Celeste, I think there will be a lot of toying with Yasmin that Celeste lives out a, a different side to her that she's, I think with industry, it's a lot of the characters are getting it from both sides. So they're having to take it and they're dishing it out somewhere else. It, it, it kind of goes very much to this show. And that's the sort of relationship with Yasmin. Celeste takes out on Yasmin in a way what she has to take at home. I mean, and Celeste is one of the few female executives that we see like in power on the show and she does take a liking to Yasmin. What do you think specifically she sees in her? I think that, that Celeste is fascinated by Yasmin because Yasmin comes from a world that every character has sort of that issue with Yasmin that she does come from money. So Yasmin has got all of this given that Celeste has worked for all her life. So there is a sort of aversion to Yasmin as well as a fascination. For Celeste, because Celeste has, this does not come from money. Her parents are not wealthy. Uh, she's 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 a foreigner, and she has worked her way to being a, an executive at Pierpoint. And, and there is Yasmin sort of waltzing in. So, but also Celeste sees just how capable Yasmin is in a way. So there is a kind of like fascination as well as an aversion which is why I think they get involved in the way they do. Yeah, you have a really interesting scene when they when they meet and she makes a, a really big assumption about uh, who Celeste is. Um, I like that you bring up the point that, you know, Yasmin comes from money and a lot of the characters actually don't. It seems like a big theme this season is earning your place versus being given it. Uh, where do you think your characters stand on that line, on that spectrum? Me? Uh, yeah, you can go first. All right, well, I, I think, as I said, I think she's earned her place. I think she's worked really hard with everything she's got. She's been using her intellect, her body, her looks, her manipulation, her people skills to get where she is, to get out of where she comes from and to make it. So I think that Celeste certainly doesn't come from this world, but has a natural affinity for it and, and moves in it very easily. It's sort of her comfort zone. Yeah, and likewise, I think Venetia, she, she comes from like an immigrant family. She was the only one from her school to get into Oxford. Her whole as someone from a younger generation who's maybe a little bit more kind of aware of of things I think her whole rhetoric is is earning earning one's place and and the meritocracy that the industry kind of talks about a lot and I think that that kind of adds to her general kind of anxiety to to prove that she is worth the space that she's taking up she she really wants to earn her place um and it's something that really drives her, but at the same time frightens her that she's not kind of doing enough to do it. And speaking of Venetia specifically, I mean, she is a, a new graduate. I, you know, last season we had a focus on a lot of graduates and this season it's really only Venetia's, you know, viewpoint that we're getting in terms of graduates. What does she make of everything that's happening at Pierpoint? I think she's probably come in with a bit of an expectation and has had those met to some degree but she's she's definitely come in with a lot of force and she like straight off the back in one of the first scenes that we see with her you know she pulls someone up for saying something a bit inappropriate and then someone kind of asks her to do something that's not really in her remit and, and she's very immediate and direct about kind of speaking up about it and it's something that people aren't used to and people respond very differently to, but we can kind of see it helping her get ahead a bit. Um, yeah. Um, and the women on this show obviously are incredibly complex and and varied, and they're in this you know super male dominated environment. How do you think the show goes about handling you know? 
bullying and power dynamics, especially amongst women and between women um, in, in the corporate world. Um, uh, Katrine, you can go first. I think, I think it's a topic, definitely, because it comes up again and again and again that women are being bullied. In, in terms of Celeste's character, I think she's doing the bullying. So that's, it's a sort of different take on it because she certainly bullies. Um, and so that's the way I can think of it. The only time that it's really uh, a woman bullying in the show, um, Venetia doesn't, will not, you know, has as little as possible of it. You know, she speaks her mind and, and, and doesn't, you know, take it as like Yasmin did when she started. So that's different. But I think in my case, Celeste is certainly doing some of the bullying. I do also think for Venetia, maybe she might be expecting this kind of um, like banter, bullying environment with the men. But I think when it, when it happens between the women, so some of the kind of hierarchy stunts that that Yasmin pulls on her I think it's a, a big shock um I don't think it's something she was expecting um and it kind of reflects in her in her reaction because that I think because as Katrine says Venetia is very bold she doesn't really face that much from the men but the stuff that she faces from I say women but it's mainly Yasmin is is something that does cut her quite a lot and, she, and she's not entirely sure how to deal with it. Um, like I said before, so many of the characters on the show are so varied and complex, and a lot of the time their decision-making processes are interesting and, and frustrating to watch as a viewer, which makes it so you know appealing to continue to watch the show. I mean, what kind of advice would you give to your character if you were able to uh, take them out for a, a, a drink or, or a, a lunch or a dinner? Um, Indy, you can go first. Um, I think with with Venetia, she, on the face of it, she kind of does the right things in response to the situations that she's in, just in terms of, you know, what what a general protocol might be. But I think my advice to her would be to kind of stand by them and not doubt the kind of directness that she has, because. A lot of the times, specifically in the in the final few episodes, there's a lot of doubt and there's a lot of kind of questioning about if she has done the right thing. But she needs to be able to stick by herself and and kind of back herself a little bit more. It can't just be about kind of being perfect all the time. She has to kind of back who she is. That would be my little chat to her, little pet talk. If I could have dinner with Celeste, I would probably ask her for advice. <laughs> um, but if I'd say anything to her, I'd probably say like, maybe stay professional, but she'd probably go like, Qu'est-ce que tu veux dire? what do you mean? Yeah, what's the fun in that? <laughs> what, do you, you, what do you want to, you want to tell me something? <laughs> you know, what's the fun in that? Back off. Um, and I, my last question, because my time is almost up, um, uh, what was it like for you guys joining a cast that, you know, kind of already was set in motion and had things established? Um, Katrina, you can go first. Kind of daunting at first, definitely. I mean, when I first arrived in Cardiff, I was getting into the lift and there they all were and, and, and they were all chatting amongst each other. And I knew them all from the show because I had binged it beforehand. And nobody knew who I was, so I was just standing there going like, you know, I'm in the show with you, but you don't know that yet. So it was daunting, but they were so welcoming from day one that it ended up just being the absolute joy that it was. Yeah, it was such a nice environment to work in, um, like because of the cast. And yeah, it was a bit. It was a bit daunting at first, especially because you could tell that they had like really come up together because a lot of them were quite new when they started out and they, they'd really bonded. Um, but they were all very like open and generous. And in the green room, a lot of the time there were people that you would never like have actual scenes with, but you still got to kind of meet them and chat to them and, and really get to know them, which was really lovely. 
That's amazing. Well, it was so great talking to you guys. Like I said, huge industry fan, and I think the viewers are really going to take a liking to you guys. Um, and even Celeste. Um, but, <laughs> in a weird, um, masochistic kind of way. I, the girls really like Eric online as well, too. So I think I think they'll take a liking to Celeste as well. Um, but yeah, it was so great talking to you guys and I'm excited to see the reception uh, for the second season because I've seen half of it and I loved it so far. So. Lovely to meet you, Priyana. Lovely yeah. to meet you. Thank you well. so much.